Hi, it's Trixie, and today's episode is sponsored by my personal chef, me, who's only able to be a personal chef because of our sponsor, Green Chef. You guys, just yesterday, I was hungry for lunch in the middle of the day before I had to pull together Solid Pink Disco. I did not have a lot of time. David had not grocery shopped. I didn't want to wait for Postmates, but luckily, I had a wonderful meal set up for me. I made blackened cauliflower with like a pearl couscous and I cut a bunch of green beans into like little one centimeter pieces and sauteed them with almond slices. And then I finished it with like an uh, like a mango marm like a apricot mango marmalade. I just couldn't believe I made it. You guys, every Green Chef meal is incredible. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, gluten free, or like me, vegetarian. You guys, I'm here to tell you, most restaurants don't have good vegetarian options. And if they do, it's a horrible salad or some lame veggie burger. And I love those things. But cooking diverse, stimulating vegetarian meals from scratch in my own kitchen, I can't believe I'm cooking these meals. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping at greenchef.com. Green Chef, number one meal kit for eating well. And I can personally recommend you guys make those mole roasted carrots. They were fierce. New chairs. Oh my God. I love these. Oh, I love these chairs. I really do too. I do. You know, I was watching this now that we moved into my old bedroom to film in here. And it is whack as hell. (laughs) These are just in frame the whole time. Oh, I guess so. But I mean, you know what? I mean, what What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And there's no way here to pull trade. There's no bed. Nothing makes people more comfortable in a sex situation than lots of lights and cameras. That's, oh my God. Well, remember that time I hooked up with that guy, that OnlyFans person who didn't, who didn't get hard. And I said, (laughs) it's hard for me to not take it personally when you can get hard with about 12 other people around a grip, a key grip, a dolly grip. You know, uh, Stephen Sondheim, best boy. Uh, best a script boy, supervisor, a script supervisor uh, um, assistant to Mr. A COVID officer, a body double, a COVID officer on the Paramount lot, the head of MGM. But then when we're here in privacy, that dick receded like yeah. a, like a, like Elevator a, it button. collapsed on itself like a neutron star. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it looked like earth. It was earth, a gray shriveled. Rubber band. I know. I, so I know you're averse to, you don't believe in, you know, feeding people Viagra like candy or whatever, but why not? A yeah, little, I guess I'm wacky how I don't yeah. give strangers prescriptions. I, I, I That's the personal choice. Your body, your choice. Or their body, their choice. Whatever. Their body, my choice. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. But you don't have, have a little trimix around, laying around? Oh, you know, I should, <laughs> I want to start slow. And so I'm going to start with <laughs> two injections, injectables. Two injections into the cock shaft. Do people, <laughs> do people know about trimix? Because Let's we go. talk about it, but we talk about like it's a watch brand. <laughs> It's Christmas. My husband got me a Trimix. I love it. Trimix is, they call it liquid Viagra, right? Like injectable Viagra. Yeah. You inject. So here's what you got to do. Because for people who suffer from erectile dysfunction, not even, I wouldn't say dysfunction because performing, having, maintaining an erection for six hours during a shoot is not exactly like, that's not a normal function, I would say. Right. But in order to keep that thing rock hard, they get two, it's an injectable into the shaft, the tissue of the (sighs) penis it to make it too messing but you got to pump the cock first because some of these guys got dead dicks dead <laughs> dicks dead dicks that dick dead ain't alive dick. well is it permanent damage um well there's a lot i mean some people do it i think it depends on the dick depends on how the frequency all that stuff but you could have a dead ass dick. <laughs> but you know what like a lot of hey death being dead is as being dot di- Dying is as is as natural as being born. <laughs> and having a dead dick. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> I've seen some dicks I wish were I, dead. Hello, hello. Oh my God. But, it's, but they, you, know, you got to pump it, get it hard. Then you got to stick it. Then you need is the- Is it a bop it? it? Is it no. Twist it, pass it. <laughs> you got to like boop, boop, two so injections. it's an injectable. It's, an in, it's a needle. So when you walk into the bedroom, mm-hmm. are you L driver? Yes. Kill Bill do, with the needle? Do, 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 do. I got two. Uh huh. I got. I got to take the eye patch off because I need my vision to do the. Are these people injecting their own dicks? Yeah, yeah. Most Damn. sometimes, many times, and then brave. People. There is a antidote, which I believe is like uh, similar to this. Could be very false, but it's like nasal spray. 
the, I think the active, it's um, some kind of thing like that where it's like you can. It's that, nice and X. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I think it, but because sometimes the dick doesn't go down. Well, don't they say in the commercials, if you're experiencing an erection yes. longer than four hours, but these yeah. people are like, if it's not going to be for eight hours, why bother? Well, yeah, they need to. And I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, wow, these, you, I mean, shit. Even when I've been like pumped, the, the, the most bloodshot diva pumped full of Viagra. Yeah. That's not a dick. I mean, six hours, it's not going to do, you know, that's intense. I saw a tweet the other day that said, bottoms be like, ooh, I'm so wet. Baby, that's shit. <laughs> I, <know>. I, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like, you know, the Baby, older I get, shit. the more I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You know, I'm starting to turn on my people. I'm starting to feel a disconnect. I'm like, am I gay? Was I ever gay? Because you know, how being gay is tired, tired corny, corny, and played, and played out. out. It really is. Oh my! <laughs> not as court, not as played out as drag. No, 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 no. Drag no. is more played That's out. That's the dead dick. Drag is the dead dick <laughs> <laughs> this is of the gay experience. It's the necrosis of the gay experience. It's the rigor mortis. Well, how about this? I had to tell the guy. I had to, speaking of needles. I had to. I just came from the doctor. Got a giant um, injection in my hip. So, and they told me this. Birth I, control. But, yes. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but they I had to wear a, a Johnny I, I don't usually experience the doctor like this what's a Johnny a Johnny is a, a night dress a dressing gown oh, open in the back open in the back but he said take your pants and your underwear Were off. you getting an IUD put in what that seems involved right but like all the, the other times I've gotten the shot I just you know I pulled them down a little bit uh -huh. he said take your pants and your panties off he didn't say panties but I wish he did and then I had the Johnny on over my sweatshirt with my hat and sh in, in socks and I was laying on the um, the bed for so long, like 20 minutes. We need to talk. Okay, at the doctor, the amount of time you will sit in that room by yourself is actually really shocking. Well, I, 40 minutes? Yes. 50, I, an hour? I, they said when I like got the last minute appointment and they were like, okay, 1230, you have to be here. Like, please be there by noon. So I got dropped off the wrong place. I ran five blocks to, to be 10 minutes late and then waited about um, – 20 minutes to be seen and then another 20 minutes in the thing oh, which God. is fine whatever but like i was i was just like this is the strangest thing i'm naked from the waist down with my hat on i wouldn't take the hat off and then i was like on my side with my little butt exposed and no one wants that <laughs> no one wants and then i told him i was a drag queen and he, it was <laughs> <laughs> and i just thought to myself i wish i was living someone else's life right now it was too much. Oh my! You know what you Dr. need? Michael. You need like a get. You know when Get Out, the reveal is that they're taking people's brains and putting them in other people's bodies. It's a different one. We need to put your brain in a different body because yeah. your brain in a different body. My brain into Jennifer Lawrence's lives. body. We could have a really different lives. Yeah, my brain into Jennifer Lawrence's body, or my brain into um, uh, Penelope Cruz's body, mm -hmm. or perhaps even um, um, my brain into Svetlana Lobota's body. The, oh, you could great. do a lot with that. Could you could actually a help lot her. lot with that. Absolutely. You could help her. I want to yeah. get into Paris Jackson's body. Who is Paris Jackson? This really tall, beautiful actress. I believe she's Michael Jackson's daughter. Really? Yeah, Paris. And blanket. Somebody bring up a bring up a clip. Paris Jackson. Look, she gorge. Oh wow, she she looks like um actually from here she looks like um Penelope Cruz. Yeah, when she goes missing and then suddenly like she gets really into guitar playing or like you're going to know. I'm not going to be very subtle about it. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Like Paris Jackson reveals her Barbie collection and yeah, her version for acoustic and guitars. And her love of auto harp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to be like, hmm. Something. Meanwhile, Trixie Mattel has been <laughs> found missing. Yeah, yeah. Do you like Michael Jackson music? Well, I'm not talking about the person. Do you like the sounds of the music? Um, I, I, Do you like the way it sounds? Before I knew about his um, licking little babies' asses, mm -hmm. um, I, as a child, listened to Jackson Five Motown. You're, did you really? Yeah, but I never got that into the contributions musically of that person. I don't love men's voices, to oh, be honest. Okay. Like, I, there's a I, there are a handful of like uh, singers that I listen to on the regular that have men's voices. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't like to listen to it for some reason. Who are the top five singers, male men, Shaq. men who sing? Shaq. Um, uh, didn't Shaq do rap? Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Um, oh, Rick Moranis had a country album. Rick Moranis. Um, um, uh, Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi. And, and no, really though, really, who's your five? My five, favorite five, right away. Male singers. Male singers. Go. Um, James Taylor. James Taylor. Love. Okay, next one. James Taylor. Um, Jason Isbell. Jason Isbell. Love. Okay. Greatest songwriter of our generation. Okay. Um, 
who am I really listening, listening to? I don't really listen to a lot of male singers, I guess. B-52s. Love Fred Schneider, okay, of course. two more. It was a clam. <laughs> uh, love those. I mean, love James two Taylor. More, two I more, love, two more. oh, Towns Van Zandt. That album, okay. Live at Houston, it's okay. in a bar. And while he's singing, you can hear like people talking, people going to the bathroom. You can uh, hear like pool tables. It's very noise. informal. Okay. And he tells little lame jokes between, okay. between his- Barry Manilow. Do you like him? Uh, no. Michael Bolton. No. Elvis. Of course. Come on. Okay. Roy Orbison. Uh, not really. Not really. Um, uh, uh, Barry Gibbs. No. Oh, n- as the mm. Beaches, I think. The Beaches. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Foster. Maybe. Yeah. I should have been a disco singer. Okay. Uh, oh, then a woman to um, me. Yeah, I don't know. When I think of like, oh, uh, Luciano Pavarotti. Oh, of course. I mean, come yeah. on. I remember listening to him in college because, you know, the teachers want us to listen to like, you know, the people, people. And yeah, yeah. It almost looks like an extreme. When you're singing, it's not pressure, but it's a resistance, right? It's like a piece of soft tissue that's like operating, but not clenching. Mm-hmm. And with somebody like him, the full body is engaged. And that yeah. sound is shooting out of his skeleton into an auditorium. Yeah. It's no, almost an extreme feat of like sportsmanship. It's Comanche very, horsemanship. Yes. <laughs> it's an ex- it's a it's a um, archery a, on horseback. Archery on horseback. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Well, so Eden was just saying that um, a lot of times it's hard for female female singers who are expected to look graceful, beautiful, and flawless because that that level of singing requires such a, a grimace often that like to uh-huh. really get those notes when there's no lip syncing, it's not the most flattering thing to look at close up on a camera or in a concert. So why pre-recorded is usually the T. But the greats don't care. Look at Celine. My I had the same voice. Uh, my voice teacher uh, used to sing backup for Celine, and he was like, she, and her top end, she does this thing called like the bunny face, mm. where she like almost snarls to access like her teeth. Yeah. And he was just like, it's not about looking. He's like, that's just the weird face you make to get the sound perfect. I right. said, you know what? Let the people make ugly faces. What if you had a gorgeous voice? Gorgeous. Let's say it's Celine meets Whitney meets Jennifer Hudson mm. meets. It just it's Mariah. the voice. Yeah. But every time you go to sing, the piano starts and you're like. <laughs> I think that would that would be incredible because what you want to do. And then the song's done and you go, thank you. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Because that's when you get in bed with a fabulous lighting designer. And then in concert, it all goes dark. Or a projectionist who projects a, a face onto your face, and then during the 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 moments of like the breaks then you just yeah go back to smiling well it's sometimes i mean it's kind of like an industry trope <laughs> that like people are compensated yeah yeah Susan and tongue Boyle. out too yep. the words could be mary had a little lamb and you're like <laughs> <laughs> like reagan and the exorcist yes. or it's that snapchat filter that macy rodman oh, uses yeah. the one that's like not yeah. the tongue one the other oh. one that's like oh yeah 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 that, that one's one. really intense and imagine you're singing like phantom of the opera and you're just like I love that. and But you know what? That's what she looks like. I love the idea of like an industry, like you're compensating. Like if you're not as good of a singer, mm. you like do reveals or wear fabulous, right, whatever. Right, 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 right. And then if you're a really good singer, you're like, I don't need all that. I just wear a black turtleneck. Park and bark. Yeah. The park and bark. That's why you notice. You see me at the music festivals doing about 15 costume reveals. <laughs> yeah. And then you see a door singing in a t-shirt. Yeah. That's and you why. brought the Big Apple Circus with you. To, to yeah. yeah. If you want to hear... This, yeah, although Adore's in Milwaukee tonight. She is so good live. I did a gig with her once, and this sounds dumb. I had just never heard a drag queen sing like that. Mm-hmm. Before Queen of the Universe, when my mind is permanently blown forever by right, those singers, right, right, right. Permanently, blown. permanently blown. But when I saw Adore do a sound check live, I was like, I thought she was lip syncing. I was like, this really? is unreal. Her voice un- is unreal. She's got a good voice. She's got a good voice. And it sounds exactly like her record, mm. which is very impressive. That is impressive. I don't. I mean, I don't think... Um, She's great. Adore, friend of the show. She's been on the pod many, 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 times. many, many, many. I hate she, when people do that. Yeah. When they say many, 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 many. You can just say it many, once. Many. Just say you, many times. Many means many. Many. Uh, you could say 300 times if you want to get specific. There doesn't have to be many, many's. Yeah. Many is many. Many is many is many. What about Rihanna? Did you, have, did you catch the Super Bowl yesterday? I know you're a huge football fan. I didn't. I filmed all day because I thought, it's a Super Bowl. I'm not going to get invited to anything. You better believe Gigi Gorgeous was like, you want to come over for a Super Bowl party? I said, what is this sports powwow we're doing? No, 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 no. Here's the th- here's Nobody's actually watching the game. 
They're doing drugs until the halftime show and then they're drinking afterwards. Yeah. It's great for, you know, Rihanna, I mean, listen, people to, are critical of a person who to me doesn't produce a lot of brand new music. But when you have a body of work like hers, it's called finishing early. It's when you're taking the SATs and you prepped, and so you fill out your Scantron, and you go set it down and leave yeah, before she, the time's over. I think she has 14 number one hits. Yeah, Rihanna doesn't owe you or anyone more music. Let her vibe. She's making yeah. makeup. She's mom. Yeah. I don't know why we're critical of people because they like haven't released an album in a Who cares? Yeah. It's, it is strange. It is it's, strange. It's like a one-hit wonder. Except no, they finished early. 14 times. Right. <laughs> Like Devo could write Whip It and they'd be yeah. like, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah, not? I don't know. I don't know. I thought she was, I thought it was great. I thought it was like extremely well choreographed. I don't know who the choreographer was. That information is, is I feel like you have to dig to find that out. I looked it up. Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. <laughs> she got booted off. Of, she left Spotify to choreograph for Rihanna. <laughs> Good yeah. for her. Good for And you know what? She should she, say it. <laughs> she's Canadian. She's a painter and she's a choreographer for Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna and Rihanna's music has a very uh, worldly, multicultural appeal because the way she sings, it's not even really. A, it's sort of like Sia, where the words are so distorted. It's kind of English, but it kind of isn't. Mm. You know, she like manipulates the oh, words. Oh, nah, nah. Right. Yeah. It's not even. It has so much appeal in different countries. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I started doing drag in the clubs when S and M came out. Uh huh. You better believe every show somebody had that red wig on and a cheap oh, yeah. cat suit, and they were rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> Willem and Detox were in that video. It's a great song. Yeah. I don't want to be like basic. It, that's, that's my pretty, favorite Rihanna song. That's pretty basic. Have you ever heard that song, California King Bed? It's her like big ballad. It's so beautiful. California King Bed. That's yeah, and I can't sing it because we'll get. Oh, oh, it's it's not the Take a Bow song, is it? No, it's a ballad about sleeping in a big bed, and even though you're in the same bed together, you feel really far apart. <gasps> That's like Tori Amos' song called China. China. Let's take a break. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> Hi, it's Trixie, and today's episode is sponsored by my personal chef, me, who's only able to be a personal chef because of our sponsor, Green Chef. You guys, just yesterday, I was hungry for lunch in the middle of the day before I had to pull together Solid Pink Disco. I did not have a lot of time. David had not grocery shopped. I didn't want to wait for Postmates. But luckily, I had a wonderful meal set up for me. I made blackened cauliflower with like a pearl couscous and I cut a bunch of green beans into like little one centimeter pieces and sauteed them with almond slices. And then I finished it with like an uh, like a mango mar like a apricot mango marmalade. I just couldn't believe I made it. You guys, every Green Chef meal is incredible. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, gluten free, or like me, vegetarian. You guys, I'm here to tell you, most restaurants don't have good vegetarian options. And if they do, it's a horrible salad or some lame veggie burger. And I love those things. But cooking diverse, stimulating vegetarian meals from scratch in my own kitchen, I can't believe I'm cooking these meals. And if you're trying to put on pounds too, we have the Filled Up with Protein Pact, which is a collection of recipes for high protein dietary preferences. I know somebody in my life right now is one of those people who when they want to put on muscle, they have to eat a lot and that would be perfect for them. You can now choose from 30 plus recipes weekly, which honestly, you guys, I've been eating Green Chef for like four years and I've never even gotten this. I don't think I've ever even gotten the same thing twice. So there's really a lot of opportunity to have all types of different meals. Can I tell you as well, I wish I had this in my 20s because like being able to cook from scratch, part of that is shopping. I didn't even necessarily at that stage in my life understand what certain ingredients were. I mean, I was a very closeted eater and Green Chef has made me come out of my shell because it's items I may not have ever trusted, but since I made it, I'm not scared of it. I'll tell you this too, guys. Green Chef is the only meal kit that both carbon and plastic offsets its footprint on the world. 100% of their delivery admissions to the door as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. It's nearly all packaging materials that are curbside recyclable. Go to greenchef.com slash bald60 and use the code bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's bald60 to get 60% off plus free shipping at greenchef.com. Green Chef, number one meal kit for eating well. And I can personally recommend you guys make those mole roasted carrots. They were fierce. Hey, bitch. <laughs> 
Hey, bitch, it's Cher. Do you have a small business, honey? Are you making jewelry? I know that my wig person, Julian, he sits down and individually beats my wigs, and I love that little bitch. Listen, I live in Malibu, all right? We say a lot of different things about a lot of different people, okay? My neighbor, Yolanda Hadid, she comes over, we put on the wigs, and we party, bitch. <laughs> what is happening? Okay. Oh, I know, you can go to my website, share.com, bitch, and share.com used to be a distant dream of mine because I don't even know how to turn on the computer, let alone build a website. I didn't take any night classes, but if I could, I would turn back time, bitch. My favorite thing about my website, share.com, slash bitch, <laughs> is the analytics. I can see what all my little... My little share sh- fans, which is what I call my fans, bitch. <laughs> I can see where on the website they're clicking, and they're clicking a lot, bitch. <laughs> and you know, there's great. It's great because there's there's blogging tools. There's blogging tools, and I have a lot to say. <laughs> it's getting Jennifer better. Coolidge. Oh, now it's turning Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. Okay. I could also be her, and it's great because there's custom templates. So listen. I put most of my imagination into my numbers in my shows, so I don't know a lot about building websites. I also love it because I can integrate my social media, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know I have a lot to say. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bald to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, bitch. Toodles. Um, I have something I want to talk to you about. Mm. I went to see, speaking of drag queens performing, I went to see Bob at the Troubadour like okay. two nights. Was it two nights? Two nights ago. Mm. And went in. I went the last second. I did a really good job. Um, How did you secure those tickets? Bob. You you Bob contacted Bob. Me, to, okay, you invited And then you. Bob's assistant, Kennedy, reached out. Okay. Kennedy Davenport. Kennedy <laughs> Reached out. It's, by the way, I was texting Kennedy, assistants. Bob's assistant. I almost texted Kennedy Davenport. Um, what time Imagine, should I? What time should I get there? Can you get me tickets to Bob's show <laughs> because you're both black? <laughs> yeah. Oh hey, can you text her? Um, so I get there and I walk in. It's a really they have a little VIP area. It's, oh, that's good. And um, I'm standing there watching the show. Bob comes out. It's an EP, so it's like six tracks. Oh, it's a music show. Yeah, yeah. It's a music show, but oh. it's rap music, house music, R and B vibes. Oh, cool. Um, six, I think six total performers. Okay. So Bob was doing numbers, and then he would have other. Oh, cool! Like doing numbers. Such as, I don't remember anybody's name, <laughs> but I loved but they, it. You didn't know that you oh, weren't familiar I loved with them. It, it was this beaut. There was like, I mean, everybody there was either uh, everybody was queer or black or trans. It was like mm-hmm. you had to be, and the music was great. The sound right. was great. Bob was great. Oh. The performances. Bob's rapping was like so cunty, but like comedic mm-hmm. and like. It's How so long fierce. was the show? It was at least an hour. It's only six tracks. So Bob at the beginning was like. Y'all, it's like 14 minutes of music, so bear with me here. I'm flesh- <laughs> I would have been like, Bob was like, I'm fleshing out the show. Otherwise, I'll be out of here in 15 minutes. Bob did costume changes, looked so good. Willem was there. Willem has long hair and a beard. What? It's Mary. What? Mary. It was Why the Last Man. The Last of Us. It was long beard, long hair. He goes, I'm a top now, and flips his hair. And I was like, this is crazy. The people we know are crazy. Upside down. It was really crazy. Upside down. Naomi Smalls was there with long, grown-out hair. Everybody was looking like a it was the upside down, the other mother version of themselves. Whoa. It was really crazy. And then now that I'm not drinking, I'm just keenly aware of everything in those social scenarios. I know. I know who's on drugs. Mm-hmm. I know who's drunk. And I know all of it. Yeah. It I'm, can talk, be, I'm talking about it now. It could, it could be like um, you're hyper aware. The, the sensitivity is like sharp. You have to put headphones on. Yeah. And Ear then plugs. I just get, I get more into bothering the people who are imbibing for my own <laughs> enjoyment. So like I'm standing next to Troy Sivan and this rapper, uh, is it Mikey? 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 Mike, Mikey Angelo, okay. he's a rapper from TikTok. Okay. He comes out, he's rapping, he's like 40 pounds soaking wet, the mm-hmm. twink of all twinks. Like, he comes out, and I'm standing next to Troy Savon. I said, I guess you better wrap it up, huh? Because <laughs> I was like, oh, Troy saw this little 40, 40 pound year old boy come out, yeah. and Troy's like, well, I'm 80. <laughs> I'm going to walk into the ocean. Goodbye. You know, I think we should have like a, for the, for the aging twinks, I think we should have like a midsummer oh, yeah. jump from the thing and then. Somebody, you know, um, well, who's like who's like an ultimate old twi- like a like a Courtney act. Yeah, <laughs> we got Courtney act. We got that guy from Real Gaze of WeHo, um, John, John Galeski. I don't even know. I yeah. don't know anybody's name. <laughs> all the old twinks are there, and they all have like old like hammers. 
But instead of the hammer, it's those big red shoes that are coming out. <laughs> no, they <laughs> he just they fall in a net. They put the big red shoes on them. They uh, glue a lace beard uh-huh. and then give them a wig. They just have long lumberjack lives. Yes. Yeah. She's I'd, got long hair and a, and a beard. Willem? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How is that possible? It's and you know Willem's hair is naturally like really curly, curly like yeah. Bernadette Peters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, she flat irons it. No, 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 no. Oh. I wish. <laughs> I wish. With a giant, like, um, beard. So she has and a the... big, long beard and long, curly hair. And, you know, Willem's what? medicated at all times. Okay. So Willem's also, like, super high. And she says, I'm a t-. she's screaming, I'm a top. And I was like, it's so crazy. I don't know if I'd be able to. I, that's crazy. That's too crazy for me. But some of the performers are doing that thing I love where when they're, when you're watching a show where people are rapping, they're often rapping over their own voice. Yes. So they can take oh, artistic right. breaks yeah. to dance or do whatever, and they don't have to be faithful to rapping the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the performers are doing that thing where they walk around and then put the mic down and just... Sure. Serve cuntisha. I love shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I think lip syncing should be... I, I don't think anybody should sing live. It's too stressful. Who cares? Yeah, let, I mean... If they show up, that's them. Remember them? They sang that song. Remember them? Yeah, that's well, her. That's them now. That's her. That's her. That's her. There she is. And there she was. And there she is. And that's her. Like, just put it together. As long as they're, like, standing up and doing some, even just walking around. Uh-huh. We're looking amazing. What else do you want? Yeah. Seriously. It was a really fun program, though. That's good. I noticed you weren't there. I had no idea it was happening. I was not invited. So what do you have against supporting black queer artists? Everything. <laughs> White is right. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Well, well I, I think did, you should send them some flowers. Well, I mean, I, did, I think there's some accountability here and there's a way to kind of like parlay this into a learning moment, well, a teachable if, moment. If you would let me let me finish, you would realize I did something even more courageous than that the week prior. I went to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> With a child. With a four year old. So catch that, you 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 hater. All this hateration is the being only thing worse than a child predator. Is a hater. A child. Oh. <laughs> um I, how was Disney? You'd never been, have you? No, and it's funny, it's funny that I had mentioned this plan to, I mean, I don't know, half a dozen people who had previously gone to Disney uh-huh. who failed to mention a very important um, detail about Disney Disneyland, uh, the no smoking policy. Oh, no. So the what most, happens if you're at Disney and you want to smoke? You cannot. But where do you go? You cannot. You go back to Los Angeles? You exit the park, exit the parking lot. So you know how like Six Flags, for example, will have like a little smoking area in the shadows, like Uh tucked away so nobody sees you, which is like, I guess that's great. There is no such thing at Disneyland at all. Nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. And it's an all day affair from start to finish. Well, can I say as a smoker, if you, can you do like the patch or the gum? Does that help through the day or no? No, because I'm not on an airplane. Like the, I could, I physically can smoke a cigarette in any place where it's not going to. It's not going to be an issue. I can't do that in an airplane. So the the you the, don't want to get thrown off an airplane. No, no, no. But in the air, while no, we're you up there, you especially don't want to get thrown <laughs> off in the air. But you know what I mean. I think of like my brain goes. Think about the possibilities right now. Smoking is not one of them. Not even close. But smoking at Disneyland, your outdoors, is very possible. Very possible. Fuck. You know what I mean. So it was a little frustrating. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'm going nine hours without smoking. So that sucked. But and I was also like. I mean, I wasn't super impressed by the, the, the park. I think probably because there were so many kids. Can I, girl? It was so many kids. Can I? I, I want to say two things. I know First, it's Disneyland. For, I know it's Disneyland. I want to say that I I talked a little about this, and you skipped. I think what are the two best rides? Okay. Which is Indiana Jones. Okay. It's amazing. It's like being in a movie. Is it as a roller coaster? Or is it like no? A, you're in a fake jeep. Okay. There's sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant snake sure. fire. The yeah. other thing that you skipped that I think is amazing is the Pirates of, of the, the Caribbean. Yeah, it yeah that ride is really cool. It's very I, ambient, like you're okay. in a little boat going through these scenes. Okay, um, I'm sad you skipped those two. What was your favorite? Well, so Space Mountain was my favorite actually. The first one we did, and I cried. Uh huh. Because it felt like I was like um into the, enter the void. It was like very um very simple, very simple. Like I'm surprised people like it. It is very simple. It's, it's a it's so a, it's, simple. It's in the dark, tunnel with through lights. the dark. Yeah, with little tinklies, little like uh, dorm room tinklies. One of the first times I did edibles was oh, at Disney. That's perfect. And I took a little bit of a cookie yeah. and it hit on Indiana Jones. Yeah. Cry, I would I would suggest laughing. like like really pulling on the DMT vape and then going to Space Mountain. And that would be like Can you vape? Absolutely not. But how but how are they gonna find out? Doesn't vape have no smell? Vape has Did you go in the bathroom like But that's see that okay, that's the thing. That's what I wanna I don't like smoking is not like heroin. Uh huh. Where it's like, I just need my fix. It's the thing I want to do. 
So it's like halfway. <laughs> it's like it is like heroin in that sense. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you want to do it. But the act of doing it is not shameful, and I enjoy it. And I'm not. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to see you like sticking a needle in your toe. You just need to get the heroin in there. You it's not the I'm same thing that doing, smoking. I'm, I, I'm at I'm on Disney. I'm at Disney doing Trimex. <laughs> I'm on the Finding Nemo ride injecting my car. I'm in Space Mountain in the dark with a huge bloody boner. Uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I did not get a boner when I saw the Yeti. Oh, that just gave me a chill. Well, it made Graham, my nephew, who is so cute, and I don't care about kids, but he is the cutest kid ever. Uh And he looks exactly like me when I was four. Put it together. And he's cute? Yeah. (laughs) And he cried at the Yeti. It was so so cute. I told him, but I told him, I was like, listen, my friend or... um, my you business didn't want to partner, say <laughs> yeah. Let's not partner, tell stories. My business partner, who's thirty three, uh, cried during this too. It's a horrible yeah. ride. Yeah. When that ride, no, it's st- not horrible. It's just at the end where the yeti comes, and it's oh, scary. It's the, scary. Uh, but the beginning, when the, you're going up, and they have these effects going. Yeah, so it sounds like, like you're on a. You know, it's cool. And they have this ice walls, and you hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you hear weird. it yeah. roar. Yeah, and then you. See I knew it. from that moment. Yeah. I said. I hope we never see whatever that is. And also, you're in this like um, you're not in a, a, a traditional like roller coaster uh, amusement park, right? You're like in a bowl. Yeah, you're yeah. In this, yeah. In this bowl, it's that like has, a, a fake bobsled. It's a fake bobsled with no like you don't have really like a you have nothing to like grip or like you know what I mean? It's very strange. You're in a bowl. It rattles a lot too. Those it old rattles. rides rattle a lot. And so then the the point of the ride is that a yeti is chasing you down yeah. the mountain. Yeah. So you're going up and then you're going down, and the animatronics on those yetis is fierce. Oh! It's red eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant. It's huge. It's huge. The sound effect of it roaring is so it's loud. Fierce. Yeah, it's, it's so loud, and it reaches for you as you go by. I love it. I'm not being funny. I'm not being funny. Yeah. I'm not being funny, love. By no. the way, uh, I got to talk about the UK last week. Um, I'm not being funny, love. That ride is horrifying. Yeah. You can't. Kids can't handle smoking, but they can be chased by Yetis. Say it Explain. again. Thanks, Obama. Thank you so much. Sleepy Thanks, Joe. Sleepy Do something Joe. about it. <laughs> yeah. Get on AOC. Get involved. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I got to tell you about this, though. Okay. I was flying back from the UK. Ugh. I got to talk to you about British Airways. <sighs> <laughs> it's horrible. I think that the, the Brits are doing airlines like they're doing their Wi-Fi, like they're doing the air conditioning. You oh, know, they're kind of... Not at all. Yeah, they're kind of dipping all. in and out. Okay. Very high standards for quality in some ways. And other qualities, you're like... Hmm. Yeah. The music when you get on is like, sure. And you're like, the stuff that I'm, doesn't fucking matter. It feels very British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The seats in the business class. I'm not going to play about having business class. It's very lovely, but mm. two of the seats are facing forward. Between the seats is a seat facing backwards. So I am Wait, no what? joke. Wait, what? Okay. Two? So two of the seats are facing forward. You and I, let's say we're both facing uh-huh. this way. Yeah. And then there's a seat between those two that faces this way. What? So I'm the middle seat. I'm Sandwich looking at two people looking at me. And I'm trying Why? to just play Spider-Man. I'm playing Spider-Man for Steam Deck, my video games. Sobbing. The ending was so beautiful. I cried playing Spider-Man. <laughs> Wait, why Why? Why is that? Is it a space? What why is, is, what's the purpose of it? He got bit by a spider. No, no, no. A radioactive <laughs> spider. So Peter Parker. The seats. <laughs> oh, so now once it's up in the air, you can push a button and these clear windows go up. So it's like. The, oh, Sure. Which I guess it's good that there's more seats available. Like I think it probably overall cuts the cost of first class, probably makes it more accessible. But these two people looking, at least when you're sitting That's with three so people, weird. you're all looking the same direction. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. people looking right at you. And I sat down last. So these two people are looking at me like, now you're in my bubble. And I'm like, right. well, here that we are. That is so strange. Is that a new thing? It sounds like a it, new thing. I hope it becomes an old thing. Yeah, hello. So I got to tell you about this kid crying. It's not... It's not crying. It's not. Oh, it's, it's the not, banshees of it, Ed Sheeran. I would have thought that I would look back, and Leatherface was back there cutting toes off yeah, one by yeah. one. This kid, off and on, I would say every forty-five minutes on this ten and a half hour flight, would wake up and start screaming like murder was happening, How like old? his mom was being stabbed by Ghostface. How old? Maybe two, oh, which I think is old enough terrible. to know better. Yeah, British Airways. So screaming. Scream! I, I mean, I can't even do it, but it's like <laughs> it was like there was emergency. so much guttural emergency. effort. Yeah, emergency. It wasn't baby crying like I'm hungry yeah. or look at me. It was crying like I'm in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emergency. And of course, flight is a little scary. Is it? I mean, is I don't it, know. Is it? I beg to differ. I almost 
I almost yelled a few times, shut up. Oh, I wish you I had. was so close to I going, wish you had. shut up. <laughs> like, I was so close. And then I thought about doing like, shut up. <laughs> like maybe doing a voice and then disappearing and being like, who said that? It was Dr. Phil. And then I, when we finally got up, if you would have seen the, the, the way I looked at this baby, <laughs> I couldn't say it legally. I couldn't do anything legally. What but I knew what my I knew what I was allowed to do. Yeah. When I walked by this baby, the look on my eyes was this: "You're the baby, I'm yeah. me." <laughs> it w- and and then and then this other lady's like, "Well, somebody had quite a ride." I said, "Let's not try to trivialize." And, no. And, yeah. Yeah. Don't you? And dare. I know that there's gonna be parents who listen who are like, mm, "You don't know what it's like to fly with the baby." Uh, you're four month old or whatever. Yeah. Doesn't need to see you, you UK. Uh uh-uh. uh. You're not gonna remember. No. Get I a know. sitter. I know. Ten and a half hours in the air with the. F- you have. What the, would you, know, you do? I think. I mean, sedation dentistry is the thing that happened for dentists. I mean, one. I mean, Trimex. Tri- <laughs> I wouldn't get the baby. Trimex, Trimex and the vocal cords. <laughs> I, I, would, I would give. Um, <laughs> you know, let's say my baby has a small, you know, strawberry allergy, and maybe I just. <laughs> Anaphylactic shock. Yeah, you know, and then right when we're about to uh, take your seats for landing, I'd be best. right in the knee, right in the kneecap. <laughs> I'd be a great parent. You or, would be so, a little cognac and a binky. But that being said, the more I thought about it, of course, I'm just being reactionary. Yeah. As a parent, getting on a plane, ten and a half hours. No. No matter how, my baby never cries. You don't want to cool. do it. No. That crying is going to happen. It's. I mean, I don't know what you do. They must feel so bad. Not bad because they're probably like, whatever, it's my baby, live my life. They probably feel like flying is already stressful enough and you have this, you can't even console a baby because they don't know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. So the baby's like, oh! I mean, nobody like, wants to be, yeah, I, they must feel, they feel the worst, I would say. The they baby? have to be. Oh, no, the, the parent? parents, yeah. What, and then the they more I thought the about the more, I was like, that parent probably just feels like everybody egg on my face. Like, like I'm sorry, I have to bring my baby. I'm sorry, I hate this also, and I'm sorry, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Because these babies are so young, if you're going to an international trip, I don't think you can really leave the baby. This is probably, two parents are traveling, or it's a single parent situation. Leave the baby where? With the husband, or with oh, the wife. Oh, oh or sure, with the, sure, you know. sure, yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is amazing because it connects you with a licensed therapist who can help take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. There are therapists who can help you with a wide range of things from maybe things you feel about yourself, family dynamics, and LGBTQIA plus issues. Depending on where you live, you might not have access to somebody who can help you who understands who you are. And I think as queer people, we have special interests sometimes. BetterHelp connects you with a therapist and it helps you deepen your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want. Sometimes we don't know how to react until we talk through things. I know for me, it starts inside and it starts, tension starts to turn up. And then suddenly, before I really know what's going on, I'm like, oh, something's going on. I don't know. I feel weird. I feel weird. Usually I'm saying I feel weird. I feel off before I've really figured out what's going on. And just talking about it, sometimes I do know what's going on, apparently, because when you start talking about it, you realize you have a lot more answers than you think. I mean, the broader effects of therapy are, It's amazing. You can learn coping skills. You can learn how to relate to others, how to set boundaries for yourself, and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. It's just there's no user manual for being a human being. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, and it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash bald today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. Babies, babies on a plane are tough. You know what I thought about? I'm going to bring a newborn when I travel. One of those, I really want Rent one. one of those silicone oh, real babies. Y- yes. And then get a really realistic shriek. That's like, shh, 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 oh. shh. and then I'm wearing the breastplate <laughs> and they go, oh, somebody's fussy. And then I pull down my cardigan, my letterman jacket, like my cardigan. And I put my tit with the ba- the fake baby. <laughs> you smother the baby with the tit. And I, but I'm pressing the baby's face in so hard into the, it's being like eclipsed or maybe I'm not sure on how to breastfeed. So I'm actually motorboating the baby and I'm like, she's fussy. I watched a dead little doc on people who have those fake babies. It's, it's so fabulous. Interesting. I love it. It's YouTube. fabulous. You got to YouTube it. I know. It's so, it's so I like, is that mental illness? No, I think it's like, it's like 
and it's like a, a the next level of having a comfort item. This is oh, my comfort song. This is my comfort TV show. Is it? I mean, that seems a little diabolical to me. I mean, I have fashion dolls. A fashion doll is a far throw from a baby doll. Yeah, that, adults that, with baby dolls. That's a different world. You're going to the supermarket and you're like, Man, shh, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, speaking of, I got to tell you, I made an extravagant purchase. What? I have been for a long time looking for a specific doll. Okay, how much? How much time. was it? Like twenty years. Been no, oh no, no, no. How much was the? the doll? Uh, oh, I don't want to say, but. <laughs> I've been looking for it for a long time, you know, for Barbie collectors, owning a number one Barbie from 1959, first edition, you it's know, a big like, thing. it's a big thing. It's a big get. When it was created, there was maybe only 100, 350,000 created. Okay. 350,000. It's like a 70 year old toy. There's not going to be that many left. Okay. They're going to be broken, destroyed. Sure. These are items made for children to destroy. Oh, right. So this so is a perfect condition. In good condition. With the packaging? Flawless condition. Wow. My friend, Bill Greening, who works at Barbie, mm -hmm. I said, do you know anybody who is reputable who might have a number one? He goes, let me put my feelers out. Months go by. I forget about it. My interests change. Yeah. He texts me, hey, here's her number. She has one. It's in great condition. She sends me pictures. It's in amazing condition. She sold it. I go, can I get one? And I didn't want to say who I was because I did. What if she's homophobic or something? I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah. So then I just, I, I finagle it. Yeah. I get it. It's, it's in the mail. I've never had something so expensive be in the mail. I'm terrified. How did you, how did they send it? Like, um, you know, it was like certified quick shipping signature. and you had the signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dave and I are in the hot tub. We go in the hot tub for maybe 15 minutes. We miss the delivery. I go, <gasps> oh, right. Great. Yeah. So then I have to go to the post office. I get it. It's in my hands. I get in the car. I start screaming because it hits me. It's in here. It's mine. And it's probably real. So I'm screaming. I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> screaming. And Dave is like, okay. And we're driving home. I open, you open it, it in the car and I have to verify whether or not it's real. Yeah. No, oh, how do you do that? Video. Okay, so I, I was going to say, okay. and there's a few ways you verify it's real. There's little differences in the eye makeup, differences in the quality of the plastic, mm -hmm. um, those markings on the feet. There's a few ways to identify a real number one. Everything checks out, and I'm just stunned. And I've never felt so happy in my life. I, 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 that that is deal. fascinating. And so, but, so if you could, you could probably resell this, right? And it would still fetch. I think I'm going to put it in a safety deposit box at the bank. Are you serious? Because if it stays cold and dry, it will stay nicest the longest. So what's the point of having it? Just you just I don't know. <laughs> no, really, like what <laughs> I don't know why you have it, but I always wanted you to wanted find it. a good one. Because and it's gonna appreciate it. in value. Okay. It came out in it Did you look at it? You just look at it? Yeah. It, when it, when it first was sold, it, it was two dollars and fifty cents in nineteen fifty nine. Some of those have sold on auction for $25,000. Holy so shit. It appreciates in value. I'm curious about like the, you you don't do anything with it. You certainly don't take it out of the package. Uh, well, it's it's in the box, but dolls back then weren't like vacuum packed. They came like, okay. here's the box, here's the thing in it. Yeah. You know, it's not like now where so dolls are wrapped in plastic. You don't play with it. No, you hide it in the dark, dry <laughs> and cool with silica gel and air, like a humidor, like that an is, old like cigar. An old cigar. <laughs> But that you never smoke. I think what I'm going to do is get a reproduction of it, like oh. a newer one that looks like it, put it on display. And then when people ask, is this the original? I'm going to say, no. It's like in the Louvre where they're like, it's not the real Mona Lisa. It's not the real Mona Lisa, right. That's fascinating to me. I'm trying to think of something like an object that would get so excited over that I didn't, would never like. But I never palpate. splurge on a, a pointless item. So it was a big deal. I wouldn't call it pointless. I mean, certainly that reaction is something. It felt very joyous. It felt like... It's, it feels like meeting a celebrity. That's okay. what it felt like okay. when I unboxed it. It was like, okay, it was, oh, it was Jurassic Park in the beginning. Cover it up when the helicopters come and they're the bones. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Would you ever buy, what would be an item that's like non-essential collectible relic? I don't know. Well, I was thinking about the, that, the receipt, waiting for something in the mail. I, I, when I was, in the, it was 95, maybe 1995, when a VHS copy of a Cirque du Soleil show came in the mail and I blacked out. <laughs> no, seriously. Right. Like I blacked. Like, and I remember, like I w I couldn't contain the excitement, and from the table to the the packages on the table, and then getting from the to windows to the walls. <laughs> yes, from the table to the uh, VCR, I went black because I, I couldn't. I, and I didn't make a sound. I, I was like, uh huh. How many times you watched that movie? The tape? Are you kidding? I mean, until it wore out. Wow. Like like once a day for a while. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I did that same thing with um, when I ordered on eBay. The um, because I missed the 2000 Olympics because I was being goth, and then like 
they, they <laughs> said that, no, it's true. But they, that, how time consuming is that? Is that a rule with golf? No, no, it's just you like not go to the Olympics. No, it was just like incompatible. It just didn't, they didn't cross. They didn't, there was no Venn diagram overlap. But uh, I wore out those two tapes of the women, the whole women's competition in gymnastics, wore them out, watched them every morning, uh -huh. every morning in college. Do you remember when in you college? To, do you remember when you went to see Cirque du Soleil and you realized it wasn't going to happen for you? <laughs> no, but then. remember when you went to Cirque du Soleil at forty and you said, "Oh, I don't think they are going to draft me as a young gymnast after all because I have zero training, zero I'm not training, the right gender, no and I'm not the right age." <laughs> yeah, huge liability. Well, I, I mean, I, I told like, oh, it's so crazy getting hyped up for something. Now I just try don't, to live in the moment. Slow down. Slow down. Get excited, but but use your words. Yeah. And also don't like, just, I don't ever have expectations anymore because I cried coming home from that show. You know what? People will say things like a concert, a uh, collectible, things that don't necessarily like, it's not worth it. If it makes you feel, it is worth it. It is worth it. If, if it absolutely, like it, what it's worth, what the value to you is could be, I mean, I wouldn't go see, um, you know, most, uh, popular artists in concert because I want to stand up for that long. I, David Silver went to see Adele in Vegas and he was like, it was the best thing I've ever seen. It was Seated. so worth it. Theatrical, gorgeous, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. When Probably I saw the B-52s, when they came out, what mm. I felt when mm. they came out yeah. and Private Idaho started, Crazy. even one song was worth it. Worth it. Totally. Granted, I got the tickets for free. There you go. So it was extra worth it. See, I spent about $2,000 flying everybody to go see Lebeda and she wore a yellow suit. Um, wait, I wanted to, I wanted to um, continue to talk to you about children. Yeah, what else? Um, I was very scared about having my nephew come visit because I don't... Did he sleep in your house? Oh, no, they put no, you no, in a no, hotel. No, no, no. a hotel right down the street. Um, my brother rented a big, huge car. And um, it was actually like, this motherfucker has so much energy. You don't know about it. The car? No. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Horsepower. Yeah, this car, this car? I'll tell you, I hit my nephew. He flew. <laughs> he... He is, um, he's going to be an only child and not having any more kids. And he's very, oh, you said that like, we're going to kill the other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's going to be the an only child. Go. We're thinking of doing the electric <laughs> chair around January. <laughs> but he was like, he'll just run. I think my brother told me he's like, they, one day they took him out to a hill. He said, go run up that hill. They did like 50 times. Indefatigable is the word. Indefatigable. Well, he, maybe he's going to love exercise like you do. Well, I was going to say, like, you got to get him into a sport ASAP because then he's going totally. to he's going to win a gold medal at something. He's going to win a gold medal at something. I don't think children like running, but maybe like this um, one certainly does. No, like track and oh, field. Like, yeah, There's yeah, not yeah. like five year olds doing track I and know. field. What a bummer. But maybe like was in ninja class now. T-ball. What? What the hell is that? Young kids like that play. T What's ninja class? What's T-ball? <laughs> T-balled. That's the T-ball. <laughs> What's ninja class? What's T-ball? Okay, T-ball is like baseball for kids where no one's throwing the ball. They put the ball on a thing and you hit the oh, ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like you eliminate a child trying to pitch. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then ninja and class is like self-explanatory. Is it karate? They're running around being ninjas. Bloop, nope. bloop, bloop. What do they do? Is it like intro to karate? I have no idea. But it's they're probably just running around and hitting stuff. I bet it's like... You bet it's karate element. No, I, 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 yeah, I bet you there right now he's tracking Mar Marjorie Taylor Green. <laughs> Blow darts and stars. I bet it's like um, they wear like a little ninja outfit and it's like martial arts, but it's more for kids. Like get yeah. on the ground and crawl across the yeah, floor yeah, 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 yeah. and then cartwheels and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's running around. Do you around. want a kid now? No, there was not one. I mean, I love this kid. He could not be cuter. He could not be funnier. He, um, he told me, he started calling me Candini for out of nowhere. And said I was going to jail for having a teeny weenie. <laughs> so when did you get naked in front of I your did nephew? not get naked in front of it, it was like is a like, um he has this wild imagination that often involves poop and pee. Love is a big he's a big fan of poop. I think that's normal big for fan kids. Of pee. Yeah, absolutely. And adults. Um kids love like the poop emoji. Poop yeah, emoji he just pillows. loves poop. He likes like I said, do, uh, what do you want on your pizza? He's like, poop. You know, things like that. Mm. I love it. It was great. You know, he's going to get old enough that he can come visit you. Was your family impressed by your beautiful home? Yeah, my brother couldn't get enough of the outdoor situation, which is what sadly was not fully done and is still not fully done. Let me tell you something about being 40 years old in, um, up in the hills. Do you know what the, the number one thing that catches my eye and holds my attention is? The small. The fucking sunset. Uh-huh. Why are people always talking about the moon? Why are people always talking about the moon? Girl, fuck her. It's the sun. 
the sunset. Is it like, are you like Bird Box it's, when you're watching it? I'm like, like your pupils turn black I'm and like, you're like, oh God. Uh huh. It's just, for, I mean, it's only 20 minutes long, you know, 20, 30 minutes. It is incredible. It's like th- these colors. Did you give them a tour of the property? Did you feel like Sarah Paulson and Architectural Digest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about my tiny home, my tiny house. It's so small here. Um, and it's just, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. You got to come over. I know I, you saw it, but it's it, that was like halfway done. No, no, no. My dream is that you finish the backyard. Yeah. And then we go up to that second tier and we do a podcast from under the pergola. So that's a great idea. You know, the third tier, which wasn't even started when you got there, is done. And it's so spacious. The workout area? Yeah. But I want it so I talked to the contractor about putting in a tumble track. Yeah. And how dangerous that would be. Uh, I know, but it's like it's the perfect length and you sink it into the floor. You create like a six foot ditch and then you just. <laughs> I think you better dig a six foot deep ditch, bitch, because you're going to snap that neck and we're going to have to have a service. <laughs> like, do you want to die? So, you no, think 40s, but they, I, they, I, they, you're to start trampoline, trampoline tumbling? <laughs> You live on a on cliff. A you live on a cliff. I, go out big, though. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, what about it, rings? Get some rings. Those no, are pretty safe. That's sta- those are stationary. I want to tumble. I want to fly. You know. So, but it was. It's the sunsets. I'll, I'll settle have for the a sunset. Higher center of gravity is much more dangerous. No, me. I'm not. I'm going. I'm not like doing like double somersaults. I'm just doing back handsprings and layouts, and that's it. Just boopity boppity. It's okay. I've 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 gone to the full. I'm with like, the Jonathan Van Ness of the drag world. Oh, it's very it's very level one. Yeah, yeah it's very level one. And with a crash pad and a fence, it'd be fine. But it'd probably be too expensive, and nobody else could use it. That's the thing. Do you know what I mean? Like I could never be like, yeah, go up to the top floor and use the trampoline unsupervised. People would die, not me. Uh, your little tweaker friends. Anybody, anybody, everybody would die. Mid aerial, inject some Trimax and come down on the neck. <laughs> Dead she body, doing what hard she dick. <laughs> dead body, hard, hard dick. dick. Can dead bodies get boners? No, right? Well, rigor, rigor Morris. Oh. <laughs> you know, when I'm gone, I take the Matthew Camp doll and I put, I, I put it in the chair and I face it away from the door with a blanket over it so that if someone breaks in, they think someone's here. <laughs> It's my like when you have a, a, a so home alone. When, yeah, when you have a mannequin, so you can take the the carpool lane. <laughs> like that's what I because oh I don't always God. trust my ring alarm. Of oh my God, D- David's <laughs> sister's visiting us. And just yesterday, she's waiting outside our gate to like uh-huh. uh, get in. Yeah. And some bitch out there, some lady is screaming, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> fuck you, bitch. <laughs> and Allie's like laughing. And I was like, isn't this neighborhood fun? Isn't this neighborhood yeah, really I, fun? Colorful characters. My God. And I then love Brandon that. was outside my house waiting oh for me. God. Brandon's outside my house in the car. And this lady, this woman is parked in her car. And she yells to Brandon, don't worry. The cops know me. They know I'm cool. Brandon goes, Okay, and then she goes, I'm not going to show you my dick. And Brandon goes, holy shit. Yeah. Damn. Well, <laughs> if you're going to live in Hollywood, you just have to have a, a sense of humor, roll with the punches, and yeah, just yeah, know yeah. that anything's possible. Anything's possible, and everything is um, probably. I, the but, human shit? I know. The number of I times know. I have, by the grace of God. You must feel God, like, a veteran, like a veterinary pathologist in a way, or like you're just like. You're diagnosing yeah. oh, but like illnesses I, through. Well, I'm feces. taking I'm taking a sample, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I'm I've been I've been uh, in, in on track to step in the poop uh-huh. on projected track. The yeah. spirit of like Tom Daly, Gus Kensworth, Gus <laughs> Kensworth, um, Caitlyn Jenner, every queer athlete gets inside me and buoys me that extra six inches, and I just clear the shit. And I'm like, ha. Oh, oh. <laughs> This episode is about clearing the shit. <laughs> but you know what though? Like if if it's standard to pick up dog shit. I don't. I don't the think there's an, an established etiquette around picking up your own human turd off of the sidewalk. Because I assume these are dog walkers, or like if it's good enough. I for thought. The goose. I thought they were talking about human shit. No, this is human shit. Yeah, but I'm oh, saying, oh, it's a dog walker. It's a dog walker who's like picking they're up their shit. And they're like, might as well <laughs> take one, leave one. Because if you're gonna shit somewhere where you don't want to get in trouble, you might as well do Hollywood it. Boulevard. That's true. There's no way yeah. we don't. We can't get NCIS down here to test poop right. to find out who did what. Right. <laughs> you know, just try not to poop on anyone's star. <laughs> Please don't poop. Please. On, like, don't poop on Barbara Streisand. Take two star. steps left of Charlie Chaplin and then take a shit. <laughs> Damn. Anyway. Well, well, love that. Why do we always talk about shit? I don't, I don't know. Stay tuned for the next episode about more shit. Yes, and I can't wait for your backyard to get done because that we have so to fierce. do a backyard talk about fantasy shitting. episode. You got to take a shit in that, like, um, in the backyard, and I'll pick it up with my bare hands. Oh yeah, that. Have you thought about getting a? 
a in, litter box. In, 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 <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Pretty Litter. When you have a backyard where you're bald and you're 40 and you can't put in a trampoline because you could die, you get a kitty litter yeah. box. Uh, maybe you can't do flips, but you sure can squat and take a hot turd right in the backyard. I in remember open air. There was this, you know, uh, Violet's cat Eugene. Yes. Yeah. Um, I remember there was this fierce ad. Violet did like a Pretty Litter ad. Mm. And, it, you know, only Violet could make litter look hot and glamorous yeah so there's a cat there's litter violet is in a corset like butthole out bent over hair flipped over like yeah and the caption's like did you know that pretty litter turns turns colors to let you know the health status of your cat i was like only violet yeah. has the potential to make, make this like hot yeah, cat worms hot <laughs> sexy yeah. and hot yeah. anyway well okay bye goodbye <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,